better and then provide us more food before we can she start. She needs her 90 calories. Food. I've been eating since like half a week. Or like road app. Roll, roll. Oh, okay. Anyways. Ready, Cody? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, so for this problem, what they want us to do is now they want us to evaluate the six trig functions. So we got sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Well, the first thing before we can do, even do any of that, we need to do like our problems 5 through 12. That's why I gave you all those practice of finding where is your point on the circle. So we need to find out where is this point. A couple things to remember, guys. Remember, if I start here, halfway around is what we call pi, and then all the way around again is what we call 2 pi. Right? If you start here and you go in the positive direction, that's pi. You go there, it's 2 pi. Right? Okay. Well, remember what I, like, I told you. Whatever your denominator is, I like to rewrite your pi with that denominator. So I could say, instead of writing pi, we can say 4 pi over 4. Obviously, 4 pi over 4 is the exact same thing as pi. Right? So now, what I want to do is, this is broken up into halves. Well, since I'm using my denominator's force, I want to break it up into force. So therefore, this would be pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4. Did everybody say that? Yes. Now, somebody asked, well, what if you have a number on the top that's larger than a number on the bottom? Well, you can just continue working this. This would be 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, and that one ends up being 8 pi over 4. Well, is 8 divided by 4 too? Yeah, so you guys see how it works? All right, okay? Um, and you can keep on actually going too. This could be 9 pi over 4, 10 pi over 4, 11 pi, 12 pi, 13 pi, 14 pi, 15 pi, 15 pi, 15 pi, 15 pi, 15 pi. Keeps on going back around. So if our question, they say, where's the point T? Remember, T represents a point on this unit circle. 3 pi over 4. It's obviously right there. So then we need to figure out, well, what are our coordinate points? And I told you guys, memorize your unit circle. But just don't memorize the unit circle. Only memorize the first um, quadrant. Or, yes, the first quadrant. So remember that pi over 4 is going to be your angle where theta has a measure of pi over 4 of uh, 45 degrees. So this point is going to be square root of negative square, sorry, square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2. So when we look over here, this point is an exact reflection, Jessica, of this point. Right? It's just a reflection about the y-axis. So the only thing that's different is this point is still going to use the same coordinates, but we're now going to have a negative value for your x. So I can sit now say this is negative square root of 2 over 2, comma, square root of 2 over 2. Right? And if you guys don't know how I got square root of 2 over 2, I have the proof over here that I did. So you can see that, Tessa? How I got the square root of 2 over 2? Just keep <laughs> it I'm, um, ju I'm just keeping you live and updated with it, okay? Just make sure. Are we good here, though? At this point, are we good? Okay, because this is the most basic thing. You guys have to be able to find the point. Absolutely. Have to be able to find the point. <laughs> so now what we need to do is we need to evaluate our six trig functions. So I'm going to say sine of t, cosine of t, tangent of t, Remember the sine, I think I have it written up here. Sine is your y coordinate of your or the you know the y coordinate of your point. So y is going to be square root of 2 over 2. It's really that simple, just plugging it in. Cosine is going to be your x. Negative square root of 2 over 2. Tangent is going to be a little more difficult. Because you're going to have a negative, no, I'm sorry, you're going to have a y, which is square root of 2 over 2 divided by a negative square root of 2 over 2. <laughs> Multiplied by the reciprocals. Okay, and what you notice is, oh wow, those cancel out and those cancel out. 
and those all cancel out to one, and this cancels out to negative one. Okay. So you're left with a negative one. You, would you like to slow down and take that step by step? Sure. <laughs> all I did was I multiplied by the reciprocal, right? You got that? Then I multiplied by the reciprocal up here as well. Is that reciprocal negative all along? Yep, yeah, that's a negative, and that's a negative. So this is the exact same number multiplied by the reciprocal, so that cancels out to one, right? Well, here, here's a positive times the negative reciprocal, so it turns out to be negative one. Where's the negative one? What? Yeah, where's that negative one? Yeah. It's right there. It's connected to the square. Oh, okay. Negative. There we go. Negative and negative. Right. Square roots cancel out, and the twos cancel out, so you're left with negative one. Negative one over one is negative one. Right? Okay. Um, Cozy camp. Uh, we could do the work. Remember, it is 1 over the square root of 2 over 2. But I'm going to try to speed it along a little bit more and just say, well, I know it's going to be already the reciprocal, Mr. McLogan. So it's going to be 2 over the square root of 2. We cannot have the square root of 2 on the bottom. So we have to go back to memorize how to rationalize the denominator. You can't have a radical on the bottom. Yeah. Right? So we have to multiply by the square root of 2, rationalize the denominator. So square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. 2 times square root of 2 is 2 square root of 2. The 2's cancel out, so you're just left with square root of 2. Secant, and once you guys, like I said, once you guys have enough of these, secant is the exact same thing, it's just negative, right? So secant, you can kind of bypass all your work and just say it's a negative square root of 2. Wait, why? Cosecant, right? Look at what sine and cosine are. They're the exact same. Okay. So if you just do the reciprocal of them, well, the reciprocal of sine was, you know, square or two over square root two. This is going to be the same thing, but it's going to be, you know, negative two over square root two. So the only difference, you know, your, your math is going to be exactly the same. You're just going to have a negative value. Okay. And then cotangent is the exact same thing. You're just putting the same numbers over each other. So cosine, um, cotangent is also going to be a negative one. It's not going to change anything. Why isn't it going to be a positive one? Um, because on this one. Oh, because it's the same. Yeah, it's thing. just this one is a. It's just going to be a negative divided by positive, so it'd still be a negative. Okay. So this one, you still have a negative one. But if those numbers weren't the same; it'd be different. Exactly. Yep. Okay. And that's what happens when you have like your thirty or uh, your thirty and your sixty degree triangle with the one half and the square root of three. It changes up, but. When you have their 45, so your two coordinate points are the same, you guys can see a lot of the same patterns happen, happen together. But that is how we um, how solve we for that it. coordinate point. So the question I ask you guys is, if I gave you a point on the unit circle,